Hello again. Welcome to another Catfish and Chalk Talk. I'm your host, Brad Durick. Uh, we're still up here on the red waiting for the ice to break. God, I hope it's in the next week or so because I am getting ready to fish. I'm going nuts. We got kayaks need rigging, boats to get out of storage, hopefully in the next week or so. But a couple weeks ago, I put up on the Facebook group, what would anybody like to see? I got a couple of requests. So here's one of them is how I do my record keeping. Pretty short and simple. Um, I know a lot of people when I speak, I say, raise your hands if you started keeping records, and a few do, and then I say, raise your hand if you kept doing records, and many people put their hands down. But uh, I am the worst record keeper alive. I can't even balance a checkbook properly. So I keep it very simple and utilize uh, a system of record keeping and research kind of at the end, and if I need something in a pinch, I know where to get it. But I've got, what are we up to now, 2018, I've got 12 years worth of records now. And I keep a very simple thing. Uh, take a look at my a picture of my book here. Uh, nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary, just a simple desk calendar. I jot down a few notes. Uh, going over to the board here, we'll move this over. Basically all I keep for records in my notebook on a day-to-day -day basis is how many fish we caught, how many hours we fished. I also like to write down who I was with so I can remember a specific day. I mark what section of river I'm on, and then I make any notes of what really worked or what didn't work or if something changed, and sometimes I write down uh, the biggest fish of the day or if I had some fish over 20. That's really all I write down. If I need more in-depth numbers, I can go get them, at usgs.gov, look up my section of river, I can get water temperatures, I can get water flows, water heights, I can even get O2 levels on our gauges. And then for my weather, previous weather, I use wunderground.com, I can go back, look at historical weather, get whatever I need. So if I'm looking for a trend, I can go to those websites and, and look at that. If I want to look up something in the future, IntelliCast now uses the W Underground barometer uh, forecast, so you can actually go look at that. But this is a quick and dirty way I keep my records from day to day. Uh, granted, when you're on the water every day, it's easier to keep a handle on things. Uh, in the book, Advanced Catfishing Made Easy, I go very much in depth of how to utilize all this system, how to put it together, and how to predict the, where the bite's going to be based on record keeping and based on where to look for the information and the trends. So, like I said, I don't keep a whole lot written down compared to what a lot of people do. I just find wind direction, every fish caught, uh, temperature sunny, cloudy. I just find that to be pretty much useless paperwork because I can go to the computer, look it up, and jot it down. Now, granted, at the end of the season, I go through, I figure out fish per hour. I do some statistical analysis of my fish per hour uh, and break it real down real tight and then I go through and get all the historicals and then punch it into Excel and from there I can map or graph anything I want to graph and find trends and, and bites and when I wrote Cracking the Channel Catfish Code that's exactly how I got the information for the patterning. So there's a lot of ways to go with this but again if you're going to keep all the information, keep it in a notebook at all times, you're going to get bogged down, you're going to quit doing it because it's not simple and easy. So this is how I do it. I keep a simple desk calendar. At the end of the day, I jot down a few notes and go back as necessary. So until next time, I'm Brad Durick.